Yeah, my name is James O'Keefe. I'm a cardiologist in Kansas City at the Mid-America Heart Institute, uh, St. Luke's Hospital. Uh, I am a clinical cardiologist, professor of medicine at the University of Missouri, Kansas City, and director of our preventive cardiology program here. I'm here today to, to discuss our upcoming article, The Potential Adverse Cardiovascular Effects from Excessive Endurance Exercise. This will be in the June issue of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. That for the first time outlines in detail not only the hypothesis that excessive extreme endurance exercise can cause cardiovascular damage but also gets into the uh, various ways in which this might occur, the pathophysiology, the um, clinical manifestations, and also some areas that need f further um, exploration. So the, the, an important um, disclaimer about this paper, uh, we want people to understand that this in no way detracts from the importance of exercise. Physically active people are much healthier than their sedentary counterparts. So much so that they on average live seven years longer than someone who doesn't exercise at all. So don't mistake what we're talking about. This is, uh, exercise is among the very most important things you need to do on a daily basis. But what this paper points out is that a lot of people take, um, misunderstand that if moderate exercise is good, then the more is better. When in fact, both from a fitness standpoint and from an amount of exercise and even the intensity of exercise, most of the, the lion's, shore, lion's share of the benefits of exercise accrue at relatively modest levels. In other words, getting out for a 20 or 30 minute walk per day is a really great exercise, even though it's not all that uh, intense. And if you're running, and we think running is healthy, but uh, the data would indicate that running distances um, in, the, in the ranges of two or three or four miles is plenty. And that running probably ought not to be done more than four or five times per week, and ideally probably more like two or three times per week. And on the other days, you do things like cross training, weightlifting, stretching, yoga, walking, swimming. But what we're concerned about is people doing extreme endurance exercise, like ultra marathons, marathons, 200-mile uh, bike rides, the Tour de France. I mean, granted, these are a small minority of people, but I guess what we're trying to clear up is that this is not really conducive to great long-term cardiovascular health. You're better off backing off, doing about an hour of uh, intense aerobic exercise, and you probably don't need to average much more than 30 to 60 minutes. Beyond that, it's a point of diminishing returns. Well, this is an important point. I think that most cardiologists and most general practitioners ought to be aware of this data. When I get a lot of athletes that come to me and they, they tell me that they're training for a marathon, I say, I don't recommend it. It's not good orthopedically. It's definitely not good for your heart in the long run. If you want to do it, train up for it, cross it off your bucket list. This is not a, a, a healthy long-term exercise pattern that is going out and running three, four, five hours at a time. It's just too much, um, too much exercise. And you can train up to do it, but uh, again, I think that um, not only for, uh, 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 from the standpoint of fewer musculoskeletal injuries, but also from a healthier cardiovascular standpoint, excessive uh, aerobic exercise, excessive extreme endurance exercise in veteran athletes. Uh, you can get away with it when you're 15 or 20 or 25 or 30, or maybe even 40. When you get into the second half of your 40s and definitely in the 50s and beyond, really long, intense exercise can cause fibrosis and scarring in the atria and right ventricle and can predispose to things like atrial fibrillation, ventricular tachycardia. Um, diastolic dysfunction, and even accelerated atherosclerosis. Well, on this information, I would suggest that doctors don't back off at all from uh, recommending exercise, but a, a lot of people fall off of exercise because they feel like if they, don't, if they don't go to the gym for an hour and a half, or if they don't go out for a three mile or a five mile or 10 mile run, it's not, any, it's not doing them any good. When in fact, the opposite is true. Getting out for a 20 or 30 minute walk with your dog, or going for a 15-minute walk during your uh, coffee breaks, going for a walk with um, a significant other, taking the stairs, 
um, jogging rather than than you know hardcore running. These are healthy exercise patterns that do bestow um, a lot of cardiovascular benefits, and and you don't it, it you don't need to, and in fact, it's actually counterproductive to be doing extreme endurance athletic events. And not to say that you can't do a few, but just don't make a career out of doing this over the decades. It, it's definitely not good for your heart, not good for your blood vessels. Well, I tell patients uh, that, that although exercise is very important, and I think that, say, committing 30 to 60 minutes a day uh, to aerobic exercise is a really, really great idea, among the very most important things you can do. Beyond an hour a day, I think you'd be better off investing your time in things like strength training. Uh, twice a week or three times a week. Um, yoga, as often as you want. And I should point out, too, that if you like to walk, and some people who are uh, obese or overweight and trying to keep weight off, sometimes they need to exercise 60 or 90 minutes a day. And, but it's generally not intense exercise. This, this is like walking or, or light uh, um, bicycle riding. And these findings do not apply to, to, to that situation. You can do light to moderate exercise as long as you want. We're, we're genetically designed for that kind of activity. We're just not designed to run 26 miles at a time, let alone 100. Or go on a full distance triathlon for 12 hours as hard as you can go the whole time. Troponins go up. BNP goes up. Um, in the long run, it causes scarring and reduces um, not only cardiovascular health, but might even shorten longevity. Well, one big surprising uh, finding was um, there was a study that one of the co-authors, Dr. Carl Levy from the Oshner Clinic, co-authored with the folks down, uh, um, down at Cooper Clinic. It's a large database of 50,000 people, of whom 10,000 were runners. And as we'd expect, the runners actually look to have better long-term longevity, overall life expectancy, compared to the non-runners. But among the runners, those who ran at moderate intensities, moderate distances, and even moderate speeds did better with respect to long-term survival than those who ran longer distances, more, uh, than, than, uh, three, more than four times per week, and even faster than about seven and a half to eight miles an hour. So. Um, when it comes to running, it, it helps to, you know, be a little less intense about it. And, and it's actually more enjoyable, in my opinion, anyway, to do it that way and, and, and not hammer it. We also pointed out that a high-intensity interval training, as it turns out, is, is very good for building fitness and doesn't seem to take a toll on the system as much as, say, two hours of continuous um, strenuous exercise. When I'm sitting here... Uh, uh, at rest, my cardiac output is about five liters a minute. If I go out and go as hard as I can, that goes up fivefold. That's a lot of volume. That's a lot of work. And we're, we're designed to do that for periods of time, shorter intermittent periods of time, but not long, real long distances and long protracted, uninterrupted um, strenuous exercise. So, but high intensity interval training is a great way to develop improved fitness. Uh, and maintain improved fitness without um, putting in so much uh, long duration um, workout. S so our take home message is that extreme endurance exercise is uh, not necessary, number one, potentially harmful. Exercise is really beneficial for you, uh, among the most important things you can do every day. 30 to 60 minutes is ideal. Um, walking is, is great, running um, or uh, swimming, uh, cross training we think is healthiest and um, avoiding uh, a, crowding pattern, a chronic pattern of, of extreme endurance uh, uh, athletic endeavors. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic Proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.